Bulu Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lotoka, and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Suva lawyer Shazran Latif remanded. Mother found guilty for murder. And Nick Onowaikula disagrees with Mbuli Thabu's social media comments. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Suva lawyer Shazran Latif, now charged with his fourth count of being in possession of illicit drugs, has been further remanded. Today marked the fourth time Latif has appeared in court facing drug charges in the last 11 months. Catherine Krishna reports. It is alleged that last Sunday in Drewanga, Shazran Latif had in his possession 7.89 grams of methamphetamine, 12.49 grams of cocaine and 2.5 grams of marijuana. He faces three previous charges for being in possession of illicit drugs laid after his first arrest last August. Arrested with Latif was a second person, Zoe Maharaj Mua, who also faces three counts of being in possession of illicit drugs. Moore has also been remanded. The case will be recalled tomorrow for bail ruling. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The 34-year-old mother charged with murder in the death of her four-year-old child has been found guilty by the Suva High Court. Rosalind Razia Khan's verdict was delivered by Judge Justice Vincent Pereira today. Catherine Krishna again with this story. The Suva High Court judge agreed with the assessors that Rosalind Razia Khan is guilty of one count of murder. In his verdict today, the judge stated he was not convinced that the accused suffered from abnormality of mind. During the trial, the accused had said that she was not in the right state of mind when she jumped into the river with the four-year-old tied to her. The court heard that on May 6th last year, 35-year-old Khan drowned her four-year-old daughter by driving her car off the road near Kasavu no Sori. When this failed, she then jumped into the Rewa River with the child tied to her. The defense has requested for more time to file written mitigation. The case will be recalled this Thursday for sentence hearing. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Finally, someone in Sudalpa has guts to tell Moses Mbulitavu that he is factually wrong when he refers to women in his social media comments. Speaking exclusively to FBC News, Nico Nawaikula says he strongly disagrees with Mbulitavu's comparison about Indo-Fijian and Ithalke women. Ali Kimbia with the story. Nico Nawaikula says Mbulitavu's comments about females is wrong, but he is not racist. I think uh, Mulitavo's comparison was totally wrong factually, uh, but at the same time, it was not racist. Noe Kula says Mulitavo is entitled to his opinion. You know, he's entitled to his opinion. I disagree with his opinion. But the question of whether or not it's racist, I don't see anything racist in that. Meanwhile, Tupo Ndonindalo's comments of Sodelpa being silent on racial issues has been refuted by the party president, Rofilipe Tuisawao. In a statement released to FBC News, Rotuisawao says Ndaunindalo should stop wasting her time meddling in the affairs of another party and focus on trying to win a seat in the next election. However, Ndaunindalo tells Sodelpa to stop giving weak excuses. Uh, flimsy excuses have been made uh, on their behalf. And, uh, but voters in this country, they, they're too smart for that. They have very long memories. As we can see, uh, we saw it in the last election. They have very long memories, so uh, they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna be paying any attention to flimsy excuses. Meanwhile, Rufilipe Tuisawao says he will not comment on the Mbulutavo issue since it's now a police matter. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The sale of single cigarette rolls is increasing despite the fact it is against the law. While officiating at the Tobacco Control Enforcement Workshop in Nandi today, Health Minister Dr. Firemi Wangai Nambete says this illegal trade worries the ministry along with tobacco products illegally entering the country. Sainani Boiler reports. The selling of cigarette rolls and other tobacco products is a major concern of the Health Ministry. 
PJC has experienced an increase in illicit trade from the sale of single cigarette rolls. And you see the emergence of tobacco products such as sister, shisha, tobacco, and other products such as e-cigarettes and on our shore. Uh, tobacco for Chile has also entered through Fiji, Fiji through our ports, entry, and call agencies. And we have seen an increased number of counterfeit and other tobacco which does not meet the requirements of Fiji's law. Dr. Wangai Nambete says the workshop will allow relevant stakeholders to work together in addressing the problem. The discussion will focus on establishing strategies to one, strengthen tobacco control by addressing illicit trade of tobacco products and border control in the field, two, have more visibility around the areas of enforcement and prosecution, and three, promotions of the effects of tobacco use, particularly as a barrier to global and national development. The Health Ministry ratified the protocol to eliminate illicit drugs in tobacco products in April to help promote information sharing and enforcement against the illicit tobacco trade. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Up ahead, public consultations on sex offenders bill resumes and music festival preparations well underway. Details after the break. Public consultations on the registration of sex offenders bill have resumed with the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Justice, Law and Human Rights. They were at the Provincial Council in Namorsi today and last night held two sessions at Rampur College in Diumba and heard up to 50 presentations from residents of the, of the area. Committee Chair Alvik Maharaj says the responses to the bill have been ver varied, with those in support adamant that the bill should be passed as soon as possible. We received a mixed reaction. There were certain members who were actually for the bill that uh, this is a good piece of legislation that is coming uh, before the parliament at the moment, which committee is reviewing, as well as there were certain members who actually suggested that uh, um, this bill should not actually be enacted by the parliament. Education Minister Rosie Akbar says it's important for parents to identify the situation their child is experiencing and not to play the blame game later. This was the sentiment she shared while officiating at the opening of two teachers' quarters at Mburua Primary School and Nase Sevilla Secondary School in the highlands of Nawai Domba yesterday. Karoy Tandalala reports. Speaking to parents in Nawaidomba, Akbar stressed the need for them not to shift parenting responsibility onto the teacher. As parents, it's my humble plea to all of us present here today. Let's be more vigilant of where our children are. Let's take note of who our, ch who our children are with. Akbar urged parents to be more aware of their children's whereabouts and what they are doing. Let's not just say, okay, teachers. The children are your responsibility. Yes, they are our responsibility in our classrooms. And if we live in a community, it's a responsibility as well. But parental responsibility, please, we need to feel, fulfill our parental responsibility to protect our little children from any form of abuse or sexual harassment or any violence, anything. The Ministry of Education continues to help parents and teachers when the need arises. However, they must work together to fulfill a child's need for security, proper education and good upbringing. FBC News. Girls who are domestic abuse survivors will soon find relief and live a life free from the fear of domestic violence. The good news comes as a result of commitments by the Fiji Women's Crisis Centre, who has set up a facility in Suva to accommodate girls under 18 years of age. The facility is ready and will open after government endorses its ethical standard report. The Australian government injected close to a million dollars towards the project. FWCC coordinator Shamima Ali says girls will be able to stay at the facility until they're able to cater for their own needs. We do have high rates uh, of violence against women and girls, and that is why we are you know, establishing these shelters. There will be two for domestic violence, there are two for domestic violence in other parts of the country, but this one is particularly for young women. So you know, we are giving them a chance in life to acquire their full potential. 
Farmers living in Baini Songo Songo settlement Rakiraki discussed urgent issues in a Talanoa session with the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Mahendra Reddy, yesterday. Dr. Reddy announced a secure market for farmers whereby the Ministry will buy crops at a guaranteed price and supply various buyers. He says they're working closely with exporters to increase sales but must boost production. The Minister adds the Agriculture Marketing Authority will facilitate the purchase, sale and export of agriculture and aquaculture products. Produce. Uh, what I've seen through when I entered from Bani Songo Songo right up to here, I hardly can see commercial agriculture. From that junction right up to here, I've seen about 1,000 acres of good quality arable land uncultivated. The third Thurston Food and Music Festival is set to be held this Saturday at Thurston Garden where there will be 10 hours of non-stop live music. The event will run from 12 midday and finish at around 10 p.m. with nothing but live music, dance, food and entertainment. Lena Reese with the story. Food and Music Festival event coordinator Alana Kaloni Singer says the event this weekend is something to look forward to. It aims to promote and support homegrown music. The Knox Brotherhood, you can see Inside Out, Nemantale, Groove Co, Inside Out, Glass Alley for their first performance live, which we're super excited about. We've also got Four Quarters, Hope Fiji, and we've uh, got some youngsters coming on stage this year, some of the students from Dave Stevens Music School. So this is their first time to perform live on stage and we're really proud to be able to be working with the kids to encourage the next generation. One of Fiji's top musicians, Inoke Kaloni Singer, or better known as Knox, believes the festival provides a platform for local budding artists to share their love of music with the public. I've always wanted to, uh, to uh, create a platform, you know, a festival platform where we could showcase music, like better music, and it also, you know, it helps the artists get get to the crowd and it also helps the artists develop themselves you know through the process. The Thurston Food and Music Festival is set to be held this Saturday at Thurston Garden beginning at midday. Lena Reese, FBC News. And now it's business time with Koroi. Thanks Jackie. Coming up, thousands of businesses to be captured on the new system. And in growing Fiji, newly built guest cemeterium to be in Pit Pigeons. Stay with us. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Businesses captured under phase three of the VAT monitoring system have until the end of this month to get going. However, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has clarified that it will consider extensions for larger entities and those who may need technical assistance. Edwin Nand reports. Up to 15,000 businesses will be captured in the latest phase of the VAT monitoring system, which registers all sales with the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service. I think it's a good idea to have that in place because I think um, from a personal perspective and in our businesses we see it streamlines a lot of the business processing uh, functions. Phase one, uh, after its announcement, it, we, we sort of, you know, uh, give and take, you know, we went with these things to and fro for about 18 months. So of course, you know, after 18 months period, you know, the expectation is very natural that you should be compliant. By 31st July, the FRCS wants businesses to at least come up with a rollout plan. When will they get new software and hardware? How long will it take to set up? And how soon could it be up and running? Different softwares have limitations in terms of how they can align to the VMS um, equipment or the software that it aligns with. So as long as those are ironed out, it, it can work well. You know, some businesses, they may have a number of shops, you know, they are not into... Uh, uh, technology, they don't have point of sale. We do understand that you know they need to acquire hardware, they need to get you know, networking done and all those things. So, but we want them to come and engage with us. Please, you know, we are very, very reasonable. 
Once fully implemented, your VAT payments for going to a private doctor, dinner at a restaurant, a weekend away at a hotel or resort for construction or buying a property and other transactions will all be registered directly with the FRCS. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The Fiji Sports Council will consider raising the rental rates at the newly renovated Vodafone Arena, which is expected to open next month. The significant improvements to the arena have come at a high cost as materials used were from international suppliers. Fiji Sports Council Chief Executive Litiana Lombuka says they have borrowed and spent at around $16.7 million. We have the views for everything. Yeah? USP uses it for exams, for graduations, FNU for use for exams. Uh, graduation, so we've always got uh, uh, customers lining up to use our venue. So, so we need to make sure that we, we try and open it up as soon as possible. Siniva from HFC Banks joins us now with the latest from the trading market. New Zealand's inflation accelerated in the second quarter. This was off the back of higher fuel and housing costs, but did little to change market expectation that interest rates will be cut this year to strengthen a slowing economy. Their CPI rose 0.6% in the June quarter and remained within their Reserve Bank's 1.3% target range. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar fought for traction against the Japanese yen. The prospect of a Federal Reserve interest rate cut later this month continues to keep the greenback on the defensive. Elsewhere, the pound struggled a near six-month low against the U.S. dollar, hampered by persistent worries over Brexit that also weighed on the euro. Poor economic data and signals from the Bank of England that it could cut rates instead of raising them as previously expected have also hit the pound. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar fell against the Chinese yuan and the U.S. greenback, but rose against the Kiwi and the Aussie dollars. With the U.S. dollar continues influencing major currencies, our dollar slipped against the PNG Kina, the Euro and the Japanese Yen. Looking at the commodities, crude oil fell a few cents but remains above $59 a barrel. Gold was on the rise at 1,412 per ounce and silver rose slightly to 15.33 per ounce. Fijians living in Osori will soon have access to the new gas crematorium being built at Rara Levu Cemetery. Minister for Employment Parveen Kumar says this will benefit Fijians as they will no longer have to buy Ndongo or mangroves for funerals. Critical Kumar reports. The newly built crematorium once completed will not only benefit thousands of Fijians but also reduce carbon footprints. This is an example. Uh, to the other uh, committees around the country uh, because as you all are aware that our Honorable Prime Minister is the champion of climate change and these are the projects that assist and help uh, in uh, combating uh, climate change. Minister for Lands Ashneel Sudhakar says the project will discourage people from cutting down trees for funeral purposes. Uh, it is established and created. Uh, we will be less inclined to cut the dongo and other trees for cremations, uh, cremation purposes. And there will be less uh, emissions as well and uh, less harm to the environment atmosphere. Lincoln Refrigeration, which has also donated around $20,000 to the project, says they are trying to give back to the community. I do see this uh, project as uh, a benefit to the community. And that's why we have approached to assist them uh, with cash and kind donation. And uh, the next project on the same premises, we try to build a mortuary. The Rara Levu Cemetery Committee has collected approximately $250,000 through donations. Lincoln Refrigeration will also install air conditioning upon completion of this project. The approximate cost of this project is $900,000 and is expected to be completed in next six months. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Good evening in Sports Tonight. Team Fiji continues to excel in Samoa. And Mario All Blacks, where are you flying Fijians offload game? This and more coming up. I'm from Kadavi and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hamachale, Nasori se, 
मिर्ची एफ एम बहुत जुलूम हाय हम शारद प्रकाश बात करते हैं तावा में मिर्ची एफ एम सबको इंसान एंड मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट हाय माय नेम इज प्रशांत आई लिव इन सुबह आई लव मिर्ची एफ एम बिकॉज मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट हाय आई एम शेन आई लव लिसनिंग मिर्ची एफ एम बिकॉज इट्स ऑसम एंड इट्स हॉट हाय आई एम रेशियो एंड आई एम शावी वी लव लिसनिंग टू मिर्ची एफ एम इन लंबासा मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट Some sports have far exceeded expectations for Team Fiji at this year's Pacific Games. Aquila Dama caught up with Team Fiji head of delegation Patrick Bawa and Fasanok president Makarita Lenoa, who shared their thoughts on how Fiji have done so far at the games. Sports like swimming and water really produce some wonderful and great results at the Pacific Games, and this has really impressed Team Fiji officials. The athletes did it well, and they did it right, and we got wonderful results in swimming, wonderful results in Vaa against the Tahitian force, whom they thought they would never, in their wildest dreams, be able to beat, and they did it successfully. What does that say? It says, "Hey, the next time round, where are we going to go?" And hey. This is what I need to adjust. Even Fasano President Makarita Leno says Fiji has done extremely well after the first week and is excited about the next few days remaining where the national athletes are expected to bring in more medals. And I congratulate all the athletes that have taken part because they really did their very best and according to what I've heard from the chef and the general managers they really went out and did the best. I Meanwhile, judo is another sport that is currently doing well at the Pacific Games. Aquila Thama, FBC Sports. Shanice Takayawa won Fiji's first judo gold medal at the Pacific Games today. Continuing the family legacy, the young judoka was over the moon this afternoon after achieving what she trained very hard for. Aquila Thama reports. Like father, like daughter, Shanice Takayawa winning her first gold medal at her first Pacific Games, and she says her training helped her today. Spring throughout uh, not to give up because uh, we had uh, we just came back from Japan training and like those that helped us be here. I just thought of those people who helped us get this far and praying throughout the uh, Lord has helped strengthen us and keep us uh, like fighting, keep going, never give up attitude. Having her mom at the games really boosted her performances today. Uh, when her, our first, my first fight, like I didn't see her throughout the match, but the first fight she was just waving her at the stand, and I was like, and then had to calm myself and con uh, focus. Just uh, very grateful to the Lord Almighty for bringing us here safely, and the, the, our teammates, uh, Fiji Judo, the managers, our family and friends that came here, and. Uh, Just thankful for being here. Judo coach Asaeli Rasolo Lemaki says the women's team has really improved compared to the last games in Papua New Guinea. Yes, uh, we have uh, improved in um, women's uh, results. Uh, there's plenty of women's. Uh, yeah. As you know that uh, we've got uh, majority of women's uh, for judo. Uh, only we, we have uh, three men's that. Uh, that came with us for for judo there will be team events for judo tomorrow aquila vama fbc sports well kai kai walu won team vg's first medal in athletics at the pacific games kai walu failed to defend his pacific games high jump title and had to settle for silver after failing to clear the bar 2.02 meters the former xavier college student was tied for silver with papua new guinea's john richard while Tonga's Mosese Foliaki won gold with a jump of 2.06 meters. I was, uh, well, I was uh, looking forward to, uh, I was looking forward to the Tongan Pala because uh, we had jumped back in Australia two weeks ago at the Shane Yami. Uh, we both jumped 205. So uh, coming into the Pacific Games, it was just him, I was just looking at him. Uh, so uh, yeah, not much, not much pressure for me. Uh, it's just uh, this was one of my best performances. So because I didn't jump over two meters, so I would say uh, it wasn't really my best. The Fiji men's basketball side went down to Tahiti in the semi-final today. Fiji was beaten right on the buzzer when Tahiti landed a three-pointer. Captain Leonard Whippy says it was a tough match and a hard way to lose, but they need to focus on winning the bronze medal now. We fought till the end and we just came up short. Uh, 
just a game of a few positions that uh, could have gone either way and uh, just unfortunate that uh, made some crucial mistakes at the end of the game and it cost us the game. This is just, I guess, a test of our character as a team and uh, I guess we have to uh, regroup and regather and we've got to come ready to play tomorrow and uh, you know put ourselves in a position to, uh, to win a medal. We now join Aquila Dama live from RPS Samoa for the latest from the Pacific Games. Mulibinaka Aquila. Hello for Jamie, what a day it has been for Team Fiji here at the uh, 16th Pacific Games in Apia, Samoa. Well, the biggest news of all um, in as far as um, day 8 of the Pacific Games is concerned, or in fact uh, the whole Pacific Games is concerned, is the record-breaking run of uh, the Mbau Bullet, Mbanuve Tambakaudoro. It has been confirmed that he has set a new games record in the 100 meters with a new time of 10.31 uh, seconds breaking his own record of 10.33 uh, seconds. Well, uh, Mbanuve was emotional after the, um, uh, the final today, after beating um, Jeremy Dodson, the favorite of uh, Samoa in the final, final. Well, I spoke to him after the final as well, uh, Jamie, and uh, this is what uh, he has to say. Especially trying to perform to the expectations of the crowd back home. Eh? This is a title that's been in Fiji for uh, even before I was born. So. Uh, I'm just glad to come out here and defend it once again. This is probably the strongest competition I've had from the Islanders. Eh? Um, uh, Jeremy Dodson, Samoa and Kelvin, their local boy. You know, um, you, when you have a strong competition like that, the times are going to drop and eventually you're going to run quicker. So It had to do a lot with uh, the expectations of the people back home. Eh? Uh, you don't really see a lot of stories like this where you switch sports and you come back and you win a medal and you come and break a record. You know, I. I I don't know what to say right now. It's, I expected beyond what I needed to do here. Um, yes, it's sort of different right now. You know, I've been off for two years and just coming back here on track. And, uh, you know, I didn't even expect to come out here and win. I just wanted to do my best. What a story it is um, for uh, someone who's been out of the sport for two years and coming back. I didn't expect to win uh, a medal at all at the Pacific Games, but uh, in turn, he has been rewarded with a gold medal and a record as well. Now, um, uh, Jamie, just looking at um, uh, what Fiji won today. Well, they won a total of uh, 13 medals today, five of which gold. Three came from uh, judo, where the um, uh, two Takayawa sisters won a uh, gold each as well. Three gold medals from um, uh, judo and, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, Kiresi Farouk also um, uh, winning a, a gold medal in judo as well. Now in athletics we won two gold, one to Banove and Chantel Lockington winning the women's um, uh, high jump as well. But um, uh, athletics we won two silver as well today in Malakai Kewalu and um, uh, also Helena Young uh, settling for silver in the 100 meters final. And um, uh, Peter Robi Tangomaki winning a bronze medal in the 800 meters as well. Well, uh, for uh, Taekwondo, they won a total of four bronze medals uh, today. Well, Jamie, um, unofficially, uh, at the moment, Fiji has uh, a total of uh, 23 gold medals. Thank you, Aquila. Two back-to-back -back historic wins for the flying Fijians have boosted their World Cup preparations. In a return match, the side faces the Maori All Blacks in New Zealand this weekend, and Captain Dominico Wanganimburoto is confident his team will continue with the momentum. Maria Begum with this report. The Flying Fijians captain says the boys now look forward to each game as they happen. Yeah, it's definitely a, a booster for, for the boys, um, getting the, the win from France from, from November and getting the win on a, on a good Maori team. The Flying Fijians had a training session at the Westbrook Field in Rotorua, New Zealand today. On the other hand, the Maori All Blacks captain Ash Dixon is aware of the Flying Fijian strength. I guess for us, we just couldn't apply pressure because we didn't have the ball. So if we're going to try apply pressure onto them and they've got the ball the whole time, then we're not going to be able to come away with points. The Maori All Blacks side hosts Fiji in their second Pacific Series test match this Saturday. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Yes, our team manager Manasa Takala says they are adamant on keeping the Mbainimarama shield till the end. Yes, our final challenge will be against Lautoka at Churchill Park this Friday at 5 p.m. Takala says the extra break ahead of the final challenge has allowed them to carry out a lot more preparatory work, including training at the Singatoka Sand Dunes. That is our main aim for the future. That's why we take a bus to Indian Singatoka. We have the training there just to move them from uh, one level to another level. And uh, this will be a very tough game to force as we will meet with our neighboring team, uh, Lotoka. 
Nasinu football coach Nathan Shivam has resigned. This was confirmed by Nasinu Football Association President O'Neill Chand, who says Shivam resigned due to family and work commitments. Chand says they're trying to acquire the services of Fiji women's football coach Marika Rondu for Nasinu's build-up to the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament. The Nasinu president says Shivam has been honest and reliable and they'll miss his services during the Battle of the Giants. That's it from sports tonight, but in the world of the weird and wonderful later on, take a look at some factors that cause headaches at work. That's coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife, we are very good at the radio Fiji, we are very good at the radio Fiji, we are very good at the number one radio. Kumar Sami Naik, Gongo Alibu Lato, we are very good at the radio Fiji, we are very good at the radio Fiji. Kumar, I am very good at the radio Fiji, we are very good at the radio Fiji. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. Sony's new $30 wireless earbuds are the company's true wireless earbuds with noise cancellation and are set to be launched in August. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. A warm on Tuesday for all. The weather did not disappoint an inch. Stay warm though, a cold night is expected. Now in the west, it's been suddenly amazing. You can't go wrong with weather this side. Eastwards from Pekhabarusuva, sunny but warm temperatures can go as low as 18 degrees. And up north, after bright sunshine, cold weather front will step up. At sea, south east winds tend to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, the next low tide at 12.27 a.m. with high tide at 6.38 a.m. Sunrise at 6.37. For tomorrow, most super bright sunshine in store for all the centers, plus it's a Wednesday. Tomorrow's stems, all centers can expect cooling temperatures. And looking further on to Thursday, fine weather has promised to be with us. Jackie, how are you liking this weather? Absolutely love it, that's for sure. Absolutely wonderful. And in our Fiji Impulse segment tonight, we asked, should drug awareness be incorporated into the school curriculum? Uh, drug subjects should be taken into the school. It will uh, make uh, kids uh, learn uh, not to take drugs and it will uh, reduce uh, drug cases. It should be a subject to raise awareness on its uh, effects. Yes. My, my view is... Uh, it should be incorporated in school because there's a lot of school dropouts and uh, there's a lot of students taking drugs in, during school hours and after school and awareness is good for them. Uh, yes, to be, tell the student not to be doing drugs at school like that, or be, uh, make awareness or make the drugs be. It should be introduced in uh, year nine. It's uh, the state the student getting adults. Yes, it should be included in schools so that students know the negative effects of drugs and how it impacts their life. Recapping the main stories for tonight, civil lawyer Shazran Latif remanded. Mother found guilty for murder. And Nikon Waikula disagrees with Mbulitabu's social media comments. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, has John McKee found the best players and combinations for the World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. Our shot of the day takes us to Samoa. Our men's touch rugby team in action at the Pacific Games in Apia. The Games is in its second and final week. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe, stay warm, good night.
Na vengo merea, mara mani waya mana tu esawa, awe tiki tu tu inde nandi, ya undo mara taka na varonga na radio fijuan. Ya wa asna vatili, ya wa mara monika. Tondo varonga vale, bunar domai biti lambasa. Bula, na vengo a prosa na garse, go erkraki. Do televisi orang orang na radio visual, na domi bit. Kalau na orang go cari bukia, orang ni na mus. Am do televisi tak na orang na radio visual, na domi bit isu. Radio visual, na domi bit.